Sears, for those who died in some of the bloodiest unrest this poor Central Asian Republic has seen in years. Hundreds have come here in front of the presidential palace to pray for the victims. Most were killed on Wednesday in clashes with security forces who fired tear gas and stun grenades and also used live rounds. Today, the mood here is somber, and the hope and prayers are for this kind of violence to never flare up again. This is one of the makeshift memorials here in the center of Bishkek, just meters away from the presidential house. All morning, residents of Bishkek have been coming here to lay flowers and to offer their prayers. And they say this is the place where some of the protesters were shot dead. Young and old, they're praying for unity and peace, but anger too is still raw here. There were 5,000 of us. We came from the countryside to ask Bakiev to come out and talk to us, but instead he ordered the shooting. They told us snipers on the roof of the presidential building fired into the crowd. I saw myself, nine people shot dead in front of me. Why did Bakiev give the order to shoot? He is to blame. Those who died, they are our heroes. To them, our eternal gratitude. This man was shot in his leg during the protest. I asked him if the change in government was worth such a high number of casualties. We won, so it was worth it. People here say Bakiev should give himself up, and reports are that he's in the country south, some say to gather supporters. But here in Bishkek, people say they don't want any more conflict. All Kyrgyz must come together, stop looting and shooting, and Bakiev must go to court, like in a civilized country. Bakiev has already said he won't resign. So as the capital cleans up the aftermath of the unrest and hopes for certainty, it seems the country is not there yet. Rosa Bregimova, Al Jazeera, Bishkek.